Welcome to Storyberries Radio. You can read along with any of our stories all for free at our website, storyberries.com. Olive Stays In by Jade Maitre One day, Olive's school was closed. Olive was surprised because it didn't seem like there was anything wrong. Most of the kids were the same as they had always been, happy, healthy and having fun. They were studying asteroids at school and Olive liked asteroids. She couldn't understand it when Mum and Dad told her that school was closed. What did this mean? But now the school was closed. Some other things were closed too. Olive's soccer games were cancelled. Her sports carnival was put off until another day. It looked like things were going to be pretty boring here at home. Olive sat by the window of her bedroom and looked outside. The street seemed very empty, even though the sun was out. Olive's parents didn't want her to play on the computer the whole day long, so they gave her some maths books, some pencils and paper. Olive didn't feel like doing maths, so she drew a picture of how she was feeling instead. It was a little dark and cloudy, maybe a little sad, perhaps a little lonely. When Dad saw the picture, he frowned. Then he sat down beside Olive. What's up? he asked her. Olive explained how she had heard that people all over the world were getting sick. Was this why they were staying at home? Were they going to get sick too? Dad gave her a hug. Some people are getting sick around the world, yes, he said. But you are not staying at home because you're going to get sick. You're staying at home so everyone can work together and try not to spread the disease between us. Spread the disease? asked Olive. How does going to school spread the disease? Going to school doesn't spread the disease, Dad told her. It's just a place where lots of people come together in a very small space. When we see lots of people all at once, it's easier for tiny little germs, viruses and bacteria to jump from one person to another. Olive imagined what those tiny little creatures, the bacteria and viruses, must look like. Are there any in my body right now, she asked. Millions, said Daddy. Some are good bacteria, though like the bacteria in our gut, which helps us digest food. Some don't make us sick at all, but others can, and it's these ones that we want to stop from spreading. When we are sick, Daddy continued, our bodies sometimes help those little viruses and bacteria to go between people. When you sneeze, for example, it shoots out the viruses or bacteria into the air, and if someone else comes along, they can breathe it in. Or if your nose is running, the viruses and bacteria live in what comes out of your nose. If you blow your nose into a tissue and someone else has to put the tissue in the bin for you, the germs in the tissue can go from your nose to someone else's fingers and then can enter their body too. But if they go from my body to someone else's, does that mean I'm not sick anymore? asked Olive. Dad shook his head. The thing about germs is that while they are very tiny, they like to multiply, which is when they can do their damage. They're like guests at a party who eat all the food and make a mess. And the best place for them to multiply is in a nice warm body like yours or mine. But if they are so small, said Olive, how can we make sure that they don't travel between people? If we can't see them, how can we keep them away? Are there any things they don't like? The easiest thing is to wash your hands, said Dad. Wash them every time you come in from outside and wash them well. Washing your hands removes those little germs and washes them down the sink. Do you want to come now and I can show you how to wash your hands? Olive said yes. So they went to the bathroom and washed their hands. They washed every part of their hands with lots of soap and Dad made Olive sing happy birthday twice while she did it. That's how long you should wash your hands, said Dad. Olive giggled. It was fun singing while you washed your hands. What else can we do, she asked Dad. Keep things clean wherever you can, said Dad. Tell someone if you feel sick or a little bit hot. Cover your mouth when you cough. If you need to sneeze, make sure you do it into your elbow instead of your hands. And try not to touch your mouth, eyes or nose too much. These are places where the germs can get into your body and multiply. It sounds like a lot, said Olive. What happens if we do all this and those tiny germs still get into our body somehow? The good thing is that most people don't get sick all the time, Dad told her, because our bodies have something called an immune system, 
that is very good at fighting all kinds of viruses and bacteria. It's like a superhero inside our bodies, and you can make it stronger by eating good food, sleeping well, and practicing good hygiene. Also, even if you do get sick, many people around the world are helping others to get better. Doctors, nurses, and hospitals all around the world are working very hard together to make sure that sick people have the best possible treatment. Olive was happy she had talked to Dad. She had felt anxious when school had closed, but now she knew why, she didn't feel so scared or worried. She was happy to know that everyone was working together to try and stop the germs from spreading and that there were things she could do to help. Come on, said Dad, let's go and do some maths together. That's the only multiplication we want in this house. And so they did. The end. Thank you for reading with storyberries.com. Free stories for kids. <laughs>